What makes Connecticut, Connecticut? What traditions and accomplishments define our extraordinary heritage and still shape our lives today? This is our story. Long before Europeans settled the fertile valley of the Connecticut River, Native Americans inhabited the land for nearly 10,000 years. Our state's name is derived from the Indian word Connecticut, meaning long tidal river. Today, Indian names still dot our landscape and Native peoples now flourish on the land of their ancestors. Connecticut's 169 towns are fiercely independent, a legacy of the English Puritans who came from Massachusetts in the 1630s to settle the river towns of Hartford, Windsor, and Wethersfield. Persecuted for their religious and social beliefs in England, the Puritans sought to create a Bible commonwealth in Connecticut that would protect their religious views. Today, their churches still grace our village greens, and their passion for community still lives in the civic spirit and vigorous politics of our towns. These early colonists believed strongly in the ideals of self-government. In 1639, they drew up the Fundamental Orders, the world's first document setting out the rules, articles, and agreements by which a community would govern itself. Twenty-three years later, the Royal Charter of 1662 guaranteed self-government for Connecticut and made it a special place. Unlike the other colonies, Connecticut could now elect its own leaders without interference from the king. We have always treasured our tradition of self-government. Legend has it that in 1687, when James II sent a representative to Hartford to take control of Connecticut's government and take possession of its charter, the document was safely hidden in a hollow tree now part of our folklore as the famous Charter Oak. During the War for Independence, Connecticut was known as the Provision State. We supplied beef to Washington's troops at Valley Forge and sent over 3,600 militiamen to join General Warren's Patriot Army fighting the British in the Battle of Bunker Hill. A remarkable commitment to education and learning is an important part of our heritage. The Puritans insisted that every member of society is able to read and write, and in the mid-17th century, Connecticut was considered the most literate place on the earth. In the 19th century, under the leadership of Henry Barnard, Connecticut's common schools were the envy of the nation. The extraordinary array of public and independent schools and universities that still dot our landscape have deep roots in our past. The Wadsworth Athenaeum in Hartford, the nation's first municipal museum, built in 1842, symbolizes our age-old commitment to cultivating and preserving our culture. Just up the road from the Athenaeum at Nook Farm, a remarkable literary colony grew up in the mid-1800s. Mark Twain gave the nation Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer, and a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court while his neighbor, Harriet Beecher Stowe, wrote the powerful anti-slavery novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. According to one account, when President Lincoln met Mrs. Stowe, he said, so you are the little lady who started this great war. Connecticut has always been a haven for writers and artists and is still home to many well-known authors. Our most popular nickname, the Land of Steady Habits, is well earned, but Connecticut has always had a strong tradition of political activism and reform. Over 100 years before the Civil Rights Movement, James Mars, a freed slave, petitioned the Connecticut General Assembly to give blacks the right to vote. In Canterbury, Prudence Crandall opened the first private school for African American girls. Our past is filled with remarkable figures whose commitment to equal rights for women at last brought women the vote in 1919. Connecticut has always been a state of migrants and immigrants. In the late 1700s and early 1800s, thousands of Connecticut citizens headed west to settle on the frontier. One observer noted in 1831 that one-third of the United States Senate and one-fourth of the U.S. House of Representatives had been born in Connecticut. 
In the 1840s and again at the turn of the century, thousands of European immigrants sought a better life here. In the 20th century, African Americans from the South and Puerto Ricans similarly came to Connecticut, invigorated our culture, and made us one of the most diverse states in the country. Connecticut has a long legacy of thriving cities, although in more recent years we have become a state of suburbs, as many of us migrated from the cities to pursue the good life in the country. Few states felt the lure of suburban living as early or as powerfully as Connecticut, and perhaps no state has had a more passionate love affair with the automobile than ours. Our remarkable system of highways and roads documents our love of mobility. Old traditions endured even as the state has changed. Connecticut, a small state with a rich and extraordinary heritage. Connecticut, the Constitution State, the Nutmeg State, the land of steady habits. This is where we've come from. This is who we are.